All right, this is Bill Hewitt, PowerStrokeHelp.com. We've had a little mystery here. I think we've solved. 6.4 liter trucks have always had a problem with breaking radiators. And uh, one of the things that we've been selling here a lot of is the big dog aluminum radiator that we have here. And we've got one that came in and it started leaking too. And if you look at it, you see, if you look at it real close here, you can see that this radiator's been bent. Like this, you can see how it gets right along here. If you look right across the the top of the uh, of the uh, uh, AC uh, condenser, you can see that this radiator has actually been crushed like this way, and and had and put a bow in the radiator. What made us come to this conclusion is how the side of the radiator is dented in. You can see the dent right here where the mount is, and you can see how how it's dented in there, and that pressure there could have caused the radiator to be damaged. And we got another one come in here. And it's leaking. And you can see also, see how it's, it's right here, this line, just follow that line across here. And see, it's pushed up almost, you know, half an inch in the middle. So it's getting pressure. Now these radiators always leak from this corner. Okay, but it's a plastic tank. So there's, it, it, what we're trying to figure out is how this pressure works to make these, make these radiators uh, do this. This particular truck has had like five plastic radiators in it. And now, after about 12,000 miles, has tore up a big dog aluminum Mishimoto style radiator. The only conclusion that we could come to is because of the severe duty that this truck goes through. Uh, I mean, maybe he's got a big 20, 22,000 pound trailer he pulls with this to job sites and, and uh, you know, where the, the terrain is uneven and the flex in the body is causing this. This was our theory. We started, you know, thinking this was probably the way to go. So, what we did to test it was to put a forklift on one of the wheels of the factory truck and we were looking all the way over on this side to see we looked over here all the way on this side and we watched right here now Mikey's gonna hold the camera on that spot while I lift the truck with the forklift and I'm just lifting the one wheel see just in that exercise of lifting this wheel. Now we lift this wheel no, 18 inches, 24 inches off the ground over here on this one side with the fork truck and you can see just how dramatically it shifted the radiator. When you're going down like through a job site and you got a big trailer and that whole truck is flexing like this and this man actually said something about it uh, that he could hear the doors moving and the body creaking in the truck as it would go over a job site. As it flexes like this something's got to give. Evidently what's making this problem is the flex in the body. Now, the other thing that we've investigated is, is that both of these trucks, the cab isolators, the little rubber pieces that sit right here between the, the, the body and the frame, they're hard to see, but this, this cab isolator that sits underneath here, they're all damaged, they're all ruined. And probably all the cab isolators on the truck are ruined. So what we're trying to determine now is that if we get the cab isolator straightened out, then is the radiator still going to be damaged? So that's where we're at on this project. We think we've solved one of the mysteries of why 6.4 radiators go bad. On this particular truck, we had to replace the cab isolators in the front where the cab actually sits right here. This is a new one, okay? And you can see the radiator when it came out had a, had a pretty good bend in it. You can see the gap all the way there. And then this particular customer his uh, cab isolators, the bottom cab isolator, the rubber on the bottom was completely gone. The top was fine, but the bottom was completely gone. So, cab isolators uh, may have a, um, a significant contribution to this if those isolators are broken apart. Now, this truck's driven pretty hard. You know, it's well over 200,000 miles. Been driven hard its whole life. The isolators not being in good condition would cause the front end to flex more and cause this problem. So we're having to install new isolators. Now, this gentleman said that he was going over some particularly rough area and uh, off-road and 4x4 low and he, you know, you know, felt the cab kind of flexing and whatnot and he heard a loud pop uh, from the driver's side of the vehicle. So that must have been where the, uh, the radiator got damaged over on the driver's side and caused it to leak, you know, right in here was it when that something popped in the front end. Uh, front braces there, it caused it to flex and damage the radiator and caused it to leak. So, we're going to replace the radiator under warranty 
But if he comes back a second time with this, uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. Especially since the cab isolators were bad to begin with.